The Queen's Orangutan, written by David Walliams and illustrated by Tony Ross. The Queen was trapped, trapped in a palace, trapped in a palace full of stuff, mountains and mountains of old stuff. Every night she would dream of escaping. The Queen had so much stuff that when it was her birthday no one had a clue what to give her, but this year she knew exactly what she wanted. A solid gold diamond encrusted stair lift, guessed the Prince. No, snapped the Queen. Guess again. A great big bottle of brandy, hiccuped a red-nosed Duke. No, said the Queen in a telling-off tone he had heard many times before. A set of porcelain thimbles, hand-painted with all the flags of the Commonwealth nations, guessed the royal baby. No, replied the Queen. Well, what then? For one's birthday, one would very much like, announced the Queen, one's own orangutan. A shocked silence descended before the Duke rage. You want a giant monkey? Orangutans are not monkeys, they are apes, corrected the Queen. You want a giant ape? Yes. Stuffed? No, a live one, please, she replied before returning to her roast beef. Thank you so much. Finally, the royal baby spoke up for the whole family. Great grandmama, mama. Now, why on earth do you want a big beastly orangutan? To be my new butler, of course, the Queen announced. The next morning, the entire royal household gathered together to celebrate. Happy birthday! A gigantic cake the size of a paddling pool was wheeled in. Next, the huge oak doors swung open to reveal... An orangutan! The great ape lolloped in, clambered up the silk curtains before leaping onto a swinging chandelier. Finally, the orangutan let go and dived into the cake with a giant plop. The queen smiled to herself. This was turning out to be her best birthday ever. Later, it was time for the Prime Minister's weekly visit to Buckingham Palace. Secretly, the queen thought the man was an awful bore. He prattled on and on about himself all day. I am sure to go down in history, he prattled. Tea, Prime Minister, interrupted the Queen. As the greatest leader the country has ever seen, you know. On and on and on, he prattled as the Queen's new butler wheeled in the tea trolley. The orangutan then proceeded to slurp some tea from the pot, before emptying it over the Prime Minister's head. Milk and two sugars, isn't it? said the Queen. That afternoon, Her Majesty was having her portrait painted for the thousandth bum-numbing time. May I say how majestical your Royal Majesty looks on this most glorious of days, your royal birthday, creeped the royal portrait painter. He was the creepiest creep in a long history of creepiness. But this particular afternoon, Her Majesty requested some paintbrushes and a canvas be set out for her new butler too. After a while, the Queen stood up to examine the two paintings. Oh, yes, one's orangutan has captured one perfectly. Let's hang this one in the Grand Banquet Hall. Hmm, yours shall be put in a dark and distant downstairs loo. I thank your Highness for her graciousnessness. That very night, the Queen had to host yet another boring banquet at Buckingham Palace for all the leaders of the world. The Queen had to sit next to the President of the United States of America. Her Majesty found the little man an enormous pain in the bottom. For a start, whatever delicious dishes the Queen served, the President always demanded a portion of fries on the side, even with his pudding. But tonight, Her Majesty knew just what to do to liven things up. She arranged for her new butler to join in the after-dinner entertainment. Dancing with the Royal Ballet Company. 
The next morning the maid brought the queen her breakfast on a silver tray as she always did. Good morning, your majesty, she chirped as she opened the huge velvet curtains. Except it wasn't the queen in the bed. Oh, no. Ah! <coughs> screamed the maid. It was the orangutan. Meanwhile, outside Buckingham Palace, a figure was swinging across the courtyard on a jungle vine of Union Jacks. It was... The Queen! Stop her! But the bearskin guards could not do a thing. The Queen was free. All the Queen left behind was a letter. I hereby decree that my orangutan butler should be made king and should be in charge of everything henceforth herewith. Goodbye forever. Signed, Her Royal Highness. The